Hi, my name is Rachel and my learner question is how are spermatogenesis and ogenesis related to gametogenesis? How are spermatogenesis and ogenesis related to gametogenesis? Wow, what a what a mouthful, hey? Yeah. Super, super tongue twister. Okay, the question was, how are spermatogenesis and eugenesis related to gametogenesis? Okay, so those are, they are seemingly big words, but they're pretty, pretty basic to figure out. So before we start looking at spermatogenesis and eugenesis, let's quickly have a look at the word gametogenesis. So gameto sounds like the word gamete, okay? Well, you should know what gametes are, our sperm cells and our egg cells. Genesis, you may have heard that word somewhere before. Have you heard it somewhere before? In the Bible, okay, the beginning. Genesis, the beginning. It means the um, origin of something. So gametogenesis is the name that we give to the process of how gametes are produced, where they come from and how they are made. Okay, so the gametes are formed by specialized somatic cells in the reproductive organs. It's very important that you remember that somatic cells are body cells and they are diploid cells, 2N. Okay, and these diploid cells are going to create haploid gametes. Right, you're with me. Okay, so let's have a look at this diagram that shows us why gametogenesis is so important. Right, so what we have there is we have a gamete producing cell in the testes and underneath it a gamete producing cell in the ovaries. Both of those have 46 chromosomes, which means they are diploid. Okay, we're looking in the human, obviously, human beings. Okay, so they are diploid. Now let's look what happens to those cells. They undergo meiosis to, to, to produce either a sperm cell or an ovum, okay, which is haploid. That's why it only has half the amount of chromosomes, 23. Let's have another look. Then that little sperm cell and little egg cell will fertilize and it will create a zygote which is the beginning of a new life. That zygote will undergo mitosis and it will split and will get bigger and bigger and eventually we will have a baby. So obviously we want that baby to have, to be diploid, to have 46 chromosomes. That's why our gametes need to be haploid. Okay, so if you can understand why we need these processes, it becomes a little bit more easier to understand the processes. So let's have a look at spermatogenesis first, okay? Obviously, this takes place in the male reproductive organ, okay, the testes. Now, we are looking at production of sperm cells. The organ in which it takes place is the testes, okay? Listen to the vocab, because you guys are gonna be asked questions on that. Now, specialized cells undergo meiosis to produce Produce the haploid sperm cells. This process happens continually after puberty has begun. Now obviously puberty can happen anywhere or can begin anywhere between 10 and 16 years of age. So once the, the male human goes into puberty, certain um, hormones such as testosterone will come into the body and they will then form this process. They will cause this process to start and the process is controlled by all these different hormones. Okay, so we're going to look at spermatogenesis step by step and then I'm going to show you a diagram. So the first step, the cells which form the lining of the testes produce cells that are called sperm mother cells by the process of mitosis, which means these sperm mother cells are still diploid, okay, 2N. You guys can actually write this in a flow chart, it helps, it helps a lot. So your first one, you've got the cells that line the testes, they are diploid. They create sperm mother cells, they are still diploid. These sperm mother cells, sorry, then divide, okay, many times still by mitosis to produce spermatogonia, okay, or spermatogonia, gonia. Right, still diploid cells because we are still looking at the process of mitosis. Then these spermatogonia are, are rather small cells, but they grow and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And when they get to their larger size, we call them primary spermocytes. There it is at the bottom, okay? When they're the largest, they are primary spermocytes. Now the first meiotic division is going to happen, okay? And meiosis is reduction reproduction, okay? Or reduction division. So now we are going to start making haploid cells and the primary spermocytes undergo the first meiotic division and the cells they produce are known as secondary spermocytes. Okay, these are now haploid, just N. Okay, 
these secondary spermocytes undergo the second meiotic division immediately. We did meiosis a, a little while back and you'll remember interphase does not repeat itself. There's one interphase and after the first meiotic division, after the first process of meiosis, meiosis one, we go straight into meiosis two. Okay, and the cells that they produce are called, sorry, there we go, spermatids. Okay, obviously they are non-identical. They are each unique, tiny little spermatid cells. Now these spermatids do not look like the little sperm cells that you know, like those little tadpole looking things, okay? They first need to mature and differentiate. And once they have matured and differentiate, they are then what we know as sperm cells, okay? Or our nice fancy word, spermatozoa. Spermatozoa, okay? Easy, right? Let's have a look at the diagram. Right, there's our diagram. So at the top you will see there's first some mitosis going on and, and that's why our cells are still diploid. Only after our first meiotic division we get our secondary spermocytes which are haploid. Meiosis II happens and after some maturation and differentiation we have our spermatozoa or our little tadpole sperm cells that will then be ejaculated during sexual intercourse and possibly fertilize the female's egg. Okay, are you guys happy with that? Pretty simple, hey, put it into a flow diagram, it really, really helps a lot. Okay, so we've looked at the guys, let's look at the girls. Okay, the girls, we are producing eggs. So we call it oogenesis, or oogenesis. Just remember, double O, oogenesis, okay. Right, so where is, where is oogenesis taking place? It's taking place in the organ, the reproductive organ of the female, which is the ovary. Okay, remember there are two ovaries, but, the ovaries do not produce eggs at the same time. Okay, the ovaries work bi-monthly. So this month, the left ovary will release an egg. Next month, the right ovary will release an egg. So although a woman goes through her, her menstrual cycle every month, the ovaries are going through a bi-monthly cycle. Okay, what happens, very quickly, what happens if both ovaries release an egg at the same time? Twins? Okay, if they both get fertilized, twins. Mm -hmm. Great, identical or not? No, 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 not no. identical. Because it's gonna be two separate eggs and two separate sperm cells. Yeah. Okay, so it's just like brothers and sisters. <laughs> okay, but twins. Right, now specialized cells undergo meiosis to produce the haploid egg cells. When the female organism it's still a developing fetus, so not born yet, still in your mother's belly, okay? Special cells on the surface of the ovary divide to form the primary oocytes within the primary follicles. So you should be noticing some sort of a difference here, okay? Our guys only start going through spermatogenesis once they have hit puberty. As girls, your eugenesis has already started before you're even born. That's why you are born with all the eggs you will ever have, okay? Right, these primary oocytes remain dormant until the female reaches adolescence. Okay, so they remain dormant like a volcano that doesn't erupt for a while. And then suddenly the girl hits puberty, all these hormones flood in and she erupts. Okay, <laughs> okay, and m the meiotic process can then continue, eugenesis can then continue because again it is controlled by the female hormones. Okay, so at this time hormones trigger the primary oocytes to undergo the first meiotic division. Now, in spermatogenesis, thousands and thousands of primary spermocytes undergo meiosis at the same time. That's why in any single ejaculation, you have thousands, millions of little sperm cells, okay? Whereas in the females, only one egg goes through meiosis at a time, and it is one per month, okay? Our eggs are much more valuable than men's sperm, hey? <laughs> much more, okay. Right, now, do you remember that when a cell reproduces, it creates two cells. Okay, yeah. we, did, we did that a while ago. Mm. So, that's going to happen in our ovaries. As this egg goes through meiosis, it's going to create two cells. Okay. But only one egg is going to be formed in the end. Okay, so this gets a little bit confusing. What you need to realize is the cytoplasm doesn't split equally to make two equal sized cells. It splits and one cell becomes quite big and the other one is a smaller cell. That smaller cell we call a polar body. That polar body will go through meiosis two again and create two smaller polar bodies and eventually it will disintegrate. Nothing happens to that polar body. What we are interested in is the biggest cell that is formed after the first meiotic division. 
Okay, guys, draw pictures, it helps a lot. Okay, so in a genesis, there is an unequal distribution of the cytoplasm, and one of the cells is rather a lot larger than the other cell. So the tiny cell, as I said, we call it the polar body, and the larger cell is called the secondary oocyte. We are interested in that little cell. That will then go through a second meiotic division. Okay, the polar bodies will disintegrate. We're not too bothered with them right now. But that secondary oocyte will produce a, a larger cell called the ovum. Okay, it produces another polar body, smaller cell. It disintegrates. Let's not think about that right now. Okay, but what we are interested in is that secondary oocyte creates the ovum, which is the egg that needs to be fertilized by a sperm cell. Okay, and then at the time of ovulation, and we're going to look at the menstrual cycle next week. So at the time of ovulation, that little egg will leave the ovary and possibly be fertilized or not. Okay. Hi, my name is Jeremiah Stole, and my learner question is, how are spermatogenesis and ogenesis different? And that is Jeremiah's question. How are spermatogenesis and oogenesis different? Right, how are spermatogenesis and oogenesis different, okay? The first thing that should pop into your head is one happens in a male and the other happens in a female. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you got that, you're gonna do fine with this question. Now, what I like to do is when you're asked to um, compare differences, you usually have to tabulate it. So I've put it in a table for you, write it in a table, learn it like that, it's the easiest way. So the first one, let's have a look. Spermatogenesis begins when the male reaches puberty and the gonadrophin hormones trigger the cells in the testes to produce sperm. So we're looking at when it begins. When does it begin in the female? Female. When the female organism is still a developing fetus, special cells on the surface of the ovary divide into, to form primary oocytes. These primary oocytes remain dormant until the female reaches adolescence and puberty triggers these hormones to start it. Okay, so males, spermatogenesis at puberty, females, oogenesis a little bit before birth and then a little bit more after she reaches puberty. Okay, right, the second one. How often does it take place and how many cells are being produced? Spermatogenesis takes place regularly and continuously in the male testes, okay, from puberty obviously, and they produce thousands and thousands of tiny little sperm cells every day. Whereas the female, only one egg will undergo meiosis every month. Okay, just remember, eggs are worth a lot more than those sperm cells. Right, and last of all, all spermatids that are produced as a result of the second meiotic division mature into sperm cells. Now you can see there in that table there's a long explanation, so let's just quickly summarize it. Remember we looked at inogenesis, this other random little cell that was being produced, okay, the polar bodies. Mm -hmm. So whereas your sperm cells, many, many are being produced, all of them are produced and mature into sperm cells that can then fertilize an egg, in our oogenesis, only one egg, one ovum is produced and the other polar bodies disintegrate and are, are void. Mm -hmm.